purpose of this video is to basically show you how I beat match in uh, virtual DJ um, and how I actually mix two tracks together. I'm using a four deck loop, uh, or sorry, four deck uh, layout here with the top showing uh, just because uh, that's what I'm used to. Uh, the reason I actually use this four deck layout is I, I normally only use decks one and two, but this particular layout has this headphone mix uh, thing here so that I can pre-listen to my music uh, prior to, to actually mixing it in and that's really useful. Um, the other thing you need to know is that I normally use hardware so I use the full setup for Virtual DJ. So I have a hardware controller that has a bunch of knobs on it and dials and sliders that I normally use. Um, you don't actually need a hardware controller to do the beat matching uh, by hand. It's just easier to do it um, because I'm adjusting several controls at once and I need all my controls together and it's just easier to do it on hardware. Um, I'm going to be using uh, the keyboard and there's two controls that I've set up so let me just jump into uh, my keyboard mapping here and I'll just show you. I have uh, two controls here that I want to show that I want to talk about left and right. So left has been assigned to nudge uh, forward one millisecond and right is nudging back one millisecond and this is really important when you're trying to beat match by ear to try and get the two pieces of music to align properly. So the first thing that I do um, is before I even do a set I um, look at all the music that I'm going to consider for my, for my music and I mark it up with um, basically three cue points uh, minimum and there might be more. So I'm just going to load my first track here. Let me talk about um, this first track. Um, I'm going to slide the crossfader over to the right here so you don't hear the scratching noise. But the first, the first um, item you're going to see here is something called Q11. So Q11 for me is the end of the intro. So the intro is that initial beat in the music. Uh, depends on the style of music, but I mix only with trance, so mine is going to be this kind of flat, repeating beat style. And then the music starts. So what I, when I'm trying to mix, I want to have the flow of one piece of music end as the flow of the next piece of music begins, and that's the marking point. So here I have Q11, which marks the end of the intro and where the music starts. So let's just actually listen to that and see what it sounds like. You'll see what I mean. So let's back up here. Take this. Go. So here's that repeating beat pattern. There might be a little bit of sort of background sounds, but it's a repeating sound. This is where I want the sound to begin for when this track uh, fades in from the previous track. And then the other part of the music is at the end, I have a Q12, which indicates the... Oops, sorry. Um, indicates the location of the end... Uh, sorry, the beginning of the outro. So this is again where the, where the flow of the music is ending, and now you have this repeating beat at the end of the track. So I'll let you hear what that sounds like. So now we have that repeating beat. So what I do is I align the intro of another track here, and it starts over at this point and I line this up so that I'm fading, doing a transition from the old track at this point where they're both, both tracks are over, over aligned to each other and then I fade out from the other tracks. So this is how I do it in my crossfades. The other track or the other cue point that I have is right here, um, Q44. I also have Q55 as well, but this indicates a one bar loop 
And the reason it's 44 is on the keyboard. If I hit 4, this indicates a single bar of time. So when I actually play this, you'll hear the same beat over and over again um, for my piece of music. So if I'm overlaying this piece of music on top of another track and it's beat matched properly, um, you're not going to actually hear, um, at least as I'm fading into it, you're not going to hear it. Um, it'll slowly appear in the sound as I fade more into this track and uh, away from the other track. So that's what the 44 cue is for. And um, how you do this is entirely up to you. Um, not all my tracks have 44 cue points, but a lot of them do, because it's just easier to, to set that up. So the track that I'm going to fade into is, is this one. So by default, um, you see these little square bits on the bottom of the track? This is where uh, Virtual DJ thinks the beats are. So I'm just going to mark my 4-bit loop here, and I'm going to start playing it. So that's where it is. I'm going to pause it. If I go back to here, you see there's another 44. So I'm going to um, go to that. I'm just hitting the equal sign, or the pause sign, it jumps to my first cue point. I'll put in my second point. And what you're trying to do is align the beats so they beat together. Now, Here's a problem with Virtual DJ. If I start playing this piece, and then I go to my second track, and I start playing it too, what you normally want to do is align these dots so they line up properly. So I can scroll in close, and you can see there's the longer, longer dashes and the shorter ones. So I'm going to line up the, the longer dashes just by grabbing the, the, the sound graph here and just with my mouse moving it. And it's not exactly perfect, so I'll hit the, the sync button here, and it will align it. Now, this is a problem with Virtual DJ, is where it thinks the beats are is, is basically wrong. Um, it's not because it's necessarily wrong, but different sounds have different beats in different locations, just the way it's mixed. So if I move my crossfader in the middle, and you'll hear both, you'll hear this double beat, thing, which is like highly annoying. So what you need to do is you need to adjust this red marker so that the beats line up properly. So I'm just going to do it with the mouse here. Actually, let me let me have both. And you notice as I move the mouse, the the uh, point, this double beat thing gets less and less noticeable. It's still there, but it's less and less noticeable. So now it's getting really close, and now this is where I use my left and right arrow keys in order to align the beat as close as I can. So here I'm just rapidly hitting the, the right hand mouse button, or sorry, right hand right button. So now it's pretty close. So now you can't tell that both songs are playing at the same time. And you can, you can definitely tell that these points along Virtual DJ's uh, sound graph are also not aligned. But you can't tell that they're both playing at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fast forward the surrender to the end. I'm going to uh, bring in the beat for uh, cry point, and you'll hear it uh, mixed properly when I fade from surrender into cry point. So I'll hit pause, and I'll hit pause, move forward to about here, I'll set my crossfader to here, and I'll start playing. Now, in order for me to listen to uh, cry point without actually uh, broadcasting it or sending it through my speakers, I use the headphone mix. So right now, um, let me just go back to about here and start playing um, Surrender. So now I'm hearing Surrender and it's playing. If I move the mix button, I hear nothing. If I hit the cry point playing, there's cry point playing. So I can
can actually hear TriPoint playing now, and Surrender is actually the thing that's being broadcast either through the internet or over the speakers. So I'm going to pause this and move forward. And now I want to align the cry point to this. So to do that, I move my mix about halfway up. a little bit of practice to know where the beat is. So it's stripped in a bit. So now I've zoomed out again. Everything is aligned properly, so I can now mix it properly. And you notice here's the 11 point, and here's my 12. So I want this, I want to end my loop on 44 when this aligns to 12. So I'm going to go back to the sound that I'm listening to here. I'm going to end my loop great. <clears throat> so you can now hear the other tracks starting to come in. There's none of that double beat stuff that's really annoying. Now I hit both at the same time, both are playing at the same time. I let that play for a couple of bars and then I fade out the other track. faded one track into the other, properly aligned, and I've done that all by ear. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great day.